Everybody's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. I wanted to shoot a quick video about some of the uh, random additions to my different kits that I've gotten in the last week or so. They're just not big enough uh, items, I think, to all warrant their own videos. But some of it's pretty useful stuff. Some of it I didn't even know existed. So maybe you don't either. You might be interested in this. So I'll try to go quick. Uh, first and foremost, I came across this the other day. I was at the, I was at a surplus store around the corner from that place you've seen in the video where I got to climb on the roof to kill the bees. Well, <laughs> they're in a really stupid spot. So we ended up having to go back there three times. And I needed to be able to sit up there and actually work without worrying about falling down the frickin' roof. So, first thing I did that morning is I went to Vance's Shooting Supplies and I picked up a Black Hawk CQB Riggers Belt, which I'll show at the end of this video. And then I needed some stuff to hook to secure myself, so the, the other guy I work with sometimes, he had his climbing rope from the Army, and we were going to throw that up over the roof. And then uh, I wanted to make something that I could hook into when I was up there. So I had seen these Blackhawk specific uh, safety straps. I'm not quite sure exactly what they're for, but I think they're for like hooking into the helicopter when you're hanging over the side or something like that. So I wanted something like that. I, I didn't even know what the thing was called. And I figured there had to be an easier, cheaper solution for that. So I talked to the guy at the surplus store and he suggested this stuff. This is tubular nylon 1200 pound test rating. So it's actually a tube, but it's a, it's a really freaking strong strap. And one of these bags got about 15 feet in it, only cost five bucks. I'm like, this is some really useful stuff. First of all, I made my retention strap just by folding the ends over once and knots and then adding two climbing rated binders so I could hook into the top where I was hanging out at and hook the other end into my Black Hawk belt. Didn't end up working that way because there wasn't anywhere to hook into up there so we ended up just wrapping this around the axle of my truck and using that as the anchor to hold the rope, throw it up over there and I just ended up hooking into the rope. But this is useful. This is useful stuff. Uh, a couple other. I mean, I could think of. This is a great MacGyver item. And you can see that's not going to take up a lot of room in your pack if you if you like packing MacGyver items like I do. So I mean, you so you can fabricate things that you didn't think of. But I mean, a, a retention strap. This would be excellent material to make uh, some hammock straps with or tree straps rather. I mean I could even use this what I've already created right here and just loop it around the tree and then hook the binder onto that cinch up there you go. You could make two two tree straps that are going to be plenty strong for hanging your hammock for five dollars of material. So something to think about that just do a search online for you know tubular nylon uh, strap, webbing straps, and you'll find a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes they, they want to sell you a lot more than what you need, but you can probably find some small outlets that sell like 10, 15, 20 feet like this, and it's not going to cost you much at all. Like I said, 15 bucks for five feet, very useful. So I got that, and of course some extra climbing rated binders always come in handy. So that was that, and why I was there, they had just gotten in a, a whole new giant shipment of Atwood Paracord. And I, I think Atwood makes the best Paracord. It's just outstanding stuff. I think it's better. I've got, I got a big roll of the Mill Spec 550 cord once from an online retailer that I won't mention. And I was not that impressed with it. It's not was wasn't nearly as nice as the Atwood stuff. But what they had that was new, I guess this has been around a while, but I'd never seen it before. It's it's Atwood's four-strand paracord. So it's like a 275-pound rated paracord. But the thing is, it's it's half the size 
a 550 cord. And I'm like, this is perfect for a lot of stuff because when you're making things like, you know, neck lanyards and all that. Here, I redid the lanyard on my on my uh, e -vape, e sig vaporizer thing. It's the perfect diameter, and it's it's not rough at all. So if you want to make neck lanyards, I, I made a thing a retention strap for my keys because I have to I, I have to tie them to my work belt because laws say you know if you've got a, a bug truck it's got pesticide in it, it has to be locked at all times and if you don't have that thing tied to you you could screw up real easy and leave the keys on the seat and lock them in so I learned that the hard way so now they strap to my belt so I made one with that and just all sorts of different kind of uses the other cords that I've used before like you know two three millimeter accessory cord uh, it doesn't have an inner core to it, and it's usually a little bit rougher, so it kind of irritates your neck. But this thing is just perfect. So if you haven't seen it, do an online search for Atwood four-strand paracord. I said it's about half the width of regular 550 cord, 275-pound test strength. Highly useful stuff. So here I got about 100 feet of it, and I threw that in my bag. So I, I just love this stuff. I'm going to buy a whole bunch more of it. I like it a lot better than 550 cord. Now people say, well 550 cord is stronger and you can have all this extra cord. Okay, fine. I still get 550 cord, but for some of the things that I use it for, I would rather have something a little bit smaller that's still strong. So this really does the trick. I didn't know it existed, I'm just telling you in case you didn't know it existed. The other thing I picked up, I mentioned this in, in the other video I just shot. But in my EDC bag kit video that I did, I, I used the water bottle lawnmower. I used the, the water, the metal water bottle in the pouch to hold all my five-piece kit material. So obviously, there's no room to put water in there. I wanted the option of being able to carry water. So I looked around online and I found this this uh, US military plastic pilots flask so it's it's all plastic so get past the metal detectors and all that like I said in the other video it also mates to the Sawyer mini filter so if you want to use it with a water filter but what I like about this is if you're using like a Maxpedition fat boy jumbo or the UTG bag that I reviewed it's the perfect size to fit on top of the compartment once you've got it cinched shut then you can set this on top it's going to have material all the way around it and then your flap goes over top of it so you can carry water too and it's it's not too big it's just enough you know this isn't going to be your total water carrying solution but it's going to give you enough to drink <sighs> water perky filtered water no less so that's that this is another thing that I picked up. It's not anything special, but I figured I would mention it because I'm working on my plans for, let me get this out of here, a bug out bag video. And I gotta be real careful with how I do this video because people get all spun up. There's been a, a rash of it lately. People are getting spun up about your videos if their opinion differs than yours. I'm just sharing my opinions on things. I'm not saying they have to be your opinions. You know, the world's full of different ideas and viewpoints and all that. I don't know why everybody thinks they have to argue if you don't see things the way they do or you like a different knife brand than they do. It's like, everybody's different. Just roll with it. But I, I gotta be careful with this bug out video, bag video, because it's a big subject. And if someone thinks that I'm saying this is the way to do it, which I never say that, you know, it's gonna be a bloodbath. Well, I got this at Walmart, and it's outdoor products, and it's not solely a Walmart brand because they also had this at Dick's, Dick's Sporting Goods. And I almost bought it at Dick's, and then I thought to myself, Self, I bet they got this at Walmart, and I bet it's cheaper. Because Dix is not exactly the most price-efficient store out there. 
So it, they wanted like 35 bucks for it at Dick's. I went to Walmart, found it for 25 bucks. Go figure. So this is a 36 inch, I'm not sure how big the other way it is, duffel bag. So this isn't something you're going to strap on and hike through the zombie apocalypse with, but it's going to pack a lot of gear to throw it in like maybe the back of your truck or something. So check out the size of this freaking bag. And I I loaded this up to capacity and yanked it around and checked for some any stitching issues. Obviously, I don't know how well it's going to hold over very very heavy use over a long period of time yet. But my initial impressions of it is that this is a pretty decent big bag for the money. So if you want to get a big bag uh, to go that route with your bug out stuff or just, you know, extra, you know, have all your mission critical type survival gear in a backpack. So if that's all you got, you know, you can strap that on your back and walk out. But all the extra stuff, you know, different clothes and things like that, you can load it up in some big duffel bag like this. And it, it does have a, a, a really nice padded shoulder strap and all that stuff. But just looking around trying to find a bag of this size, you know, most of them seem like they're around 39 bucks or, or higher. So finding this one at Walmart for about 25 bucks, this was like the largest one that they had, was pretty decent. And it actually comes in this case here, which once you load it up, what are you going to do with this case? Well, I found that this case, what I did was I took that and folded up a soft shell jacket and put it in here. And I'm just going to throw this in my trunk. So, nicely folded backup jacket. Works out well. This hasn't been in a video later, so there's lately so there's Jessica too just because you haven't seen Jessica too in a while gotta throw a big knife in every once in a while keep people happy on the subject of bug out bags low cost stuff like I said I'm not going into the whole bug out bag video yet but one other thing that I've always had because I was in the military uh, that you want something like I said I didn't know how that's going to hold up long term rough use. You want something rough use? Go with the GI duffel bag. Like an actual issue one, not one of the not a Rothko knockoff or something like that. So it should have the four grommet closure at the top. You just kind of fit them all over. And then clip it in and then you can secure it with a padlock if you want it's got the carry handle and it's got the adjustable backpack straps these make great bug out bags they fold down now I got a lawnmower and a plane it doesn't have to be some giant expensive backpack tactical backpack that costs 300 bucks to be a bug out bag. Bug out bags just carrying a lot of your gear so you can grab and go. But we'll deal with that in a future video. So going back to the, what I talked about at the beginning of the video, uh, the first big purchase that really should be a video of its own, but I just want to throw these all together. The Blackhawk CQB Riggers Belt. It's a tactical belt. It's made in the USA. It's very heavy duty. There are a lot of these types of riggers belts out there, but I figured I wanted to go good on this sort of thing since it could double as you know a life-saving securing harness or emergency repelling type gear. So I, I, I did have a 511 instructor's belt which would serve that purpose. What I didn't like about it was the Velcro portion of the belt was not there wasn't very much velcro on it at all I actually had to add some velcro to it Blackhawk belt does not have that problem so let me move the camera around here I'll let you get a look at this belt because it's, it's pretty cool I really like it okay let me move this camera down here now I don't normally tuck my t-shirt into my pants but for the purposes of this video I am 
So this is the belt itself. Now the 511 belt, the buckle and the attachment point is all one piece. On the Blackhawk belt, and there's a Condor belt just like it, the attachment point is actually over here. And it has this little Velcro retention strap to keep it out of the way when you're not using it. So this is where you would actually hook your carabiner into and then your figure eight or whatever it, whatever it is. Eh. Whatever else is that you're using. It's very heavy duty, nylon material. It's really, really well stitched. The Velcro is pretty decent. I like the way it's, I mean, little details like just having this angled cut makes it really easy to do. The steel, whatever kind of steel it is they use, I can tell is really heavy duty, high quality stuff. So what it looks like here, just cinch that down. So with regular pants on, yes, it is going to look a little bit weird and tactically, if that is a word, which I do not believe tactically is a word, but for the purposes of this video, it will be. But just for just having you know, a tactical type belt and being able to have that kind of versatility, I think it's worth it. Let me switch the camera around again. Okay, I'm back. Now, a couple other, like I said, small items that I added this week that don't deserve their own videos. Here is the medic bag I just did the video on. And I've been kind of finishing it off a little bit since I did the original video. A couple things. Like I said, I went to the, the dollar store. I got a gauze bandage roll, added it to it. I got a whole bunch of, well that's not it. Just sterile gauze pad sponges. These things were really cheap. So the more, more gauze, the, the merrier when you're putting together something like this, which this is an emergency trauma kit. This is a worst case scenario bag. This is a life-saving bag. Somebody was commenting on it about, you know, you're never going to use this kind of stuff, you know, for a first aid kit. I never said this was a first aid kit. This is, everyone's got a first aid kit, but when you really, really need the stuff that's in this kit, these are the things that most people don't have. And when you really need it, it's a life and death thing. So it's better to just freaking have it, even if you don't know how to use it. If you have it, you can either wing it and have a 50-50 chance, or it's there in case you have somebody nearby that is qualified to use this stuff, and he just happens to be caught off duty and doesn't have his, his equipment. I also added of course this had its own video which I shot earlier today, that's the Peranta Z folding scalpel which is for game cleaning but hey, it's surgical steel blade so I got it specifically for this kit. I also went back to survival tactics and picked up one of my missing pieces, the Angio cast. That's for if you got some uh, chest pressure, it needs to be relieved. I still have not got the Halo chest seals yet. That's something that can be improvised though, with any kind of like a plastic bag and some duct tape or whatever. You can whip together a chest seal if you needed to. But since I'm going all out on this, I figured I would go ahead and, and do that too. Did I get something else to put in here? Oh. Maxi pads, heavy flow for those heavy flow days. These are basically sterile blood absorbing compresses. Don't be embarrassed. Just go frickin' buy a bag. I got this about, I paid $350 for this big bag of maxi pads, and there was like frickin' 50 in there. 
I could only I could only squeeze about seven in this bag, so the rest of it are be, rest of them are being disseminated around uh, the different medical kits and stuff the kits that are in the car and stuff like that. I mean this is this is cheap, sterile, surgical, basically grade stuff. I mean just because it's what its intended purpose is, don't let that stop you from doing what it, getting it for what it was designed to do. Soak up blood and be sterile. Put, get some, put it in your freaking, quit being a sissy, just buy them, put them in your medical kit. So there's that. Move this around. So I know I could just fade out and all that stuff and be all Joe professional video guy, but I'm lazy. That's about it off the top of my head for the kind of odds and ends that I picked up. You know, sometimes these things, there might be an odd and end. They might not be something that, hey, I'm going to do a whole video on four-strand paracord. Eh, not really. But they are things that serve a purpose and are important additions to the kit. And a lot of them are just little tiny things. They're great ideas to add to different things, and you just might not have thought of it yourself. I wish people. I wish other people would do a bunch of videos like these because I freaking watch them all. It's like here, here's 20 things I just figured out that I added to my kit that are stupid on their own, but look at them all. Get some good ideas. I love those kind of videos. So I don't assume that just because this one thing on its own, I'll just put them all together. You just you, there might be if there's one thing in here you didn't think of, then this video was worth it. So that's enough about that. I'm Chris from Prepared My 101. I thank you for watching. I appreciate all the subscriptions. I appreciate the 98% of you that leave positive comments. Uh, thanks for checking me out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash preparedmind101. Uh, check me out on Instagram. Instagram at Instagram. I don't know. It's an app. Uh, that's where I put all my gear pictures, you know, new stuff that I get before it goes up on the video. So. It's just a good app to have anyway. I don't get anything for pimping out Instagram, but it's my favorite smartphone app probably. I just love playing around with it. Other than that, I ain't got a whole much whole much else to say, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it short. Thanks, guys.